What's up guys, Dwight here with another Marvel Psych Force video and in this video we're going to talk about Alliance Wars. We're going to talk about Alliance Wars because you guys asked for it. You guys asked me to dunk on the video from Dorky Dad, the top 10 best Alliance War defensive teams. So we are going to talk overall about Alliance Wars. Is this a game mode you should prioritize? What's the best war defensive teams that you should use, most people should use? Then we're going to talk about the nuances of Alliance Wars and why you should not take advices for some, from certain type of players because they don't live in the same world that uh, the, most of us live in. And uh, that's it. So once again, talk about uh, defensive teams, talk about offensive teams, talk about uh, is this a game mode you should prioritize and uh, the nuances of this specific game mode and how you can maximize the value of your roster in order to participate in Alliance Wars. So, as always, if you like the information on these videos, make sure you share it with your friends on Facebook and Discord. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe for more Mouse Psych Force content. And make sure you smash that like button like a boss. Okay, let's get started. And uh, first off, we're going to talk about Alliance Wars. Is this a game mode that you should focus in? Yes, absolutely yes. It's probably the second most, imp second maybe third most, imp most important game mode right now in Marvel Strike Force. In raids, you get uh, gear tier 17, gear tier 18, isolated to blue, normal. In uh, arena, you get power cores, and beyond that, the other game modes are not uh, important enough. The most important game mode after those two that, that I just mentioned is definitely Alliance Wars. And now, with the big announcement we had yesterday from the player's voice that the season rewards of Alliance Wars are going to give more gold to the players, this game mode becomes more important than ever. So yes, some people out there, uh, like Boylan, that says Alliance Wars is not important, is absolutely wrong because it's the most important game mode apart from the ones we just mentioned. Some of the reasons why this game mode is actually extremely important is the rewards. So it's a big source of gold, depending on your ranking, this becomes one of the, the best sources of gold weekly. Then we also have the war credits that still allow you to buy some interesting rewards, including Elite Force, which is definitely great if you want to be on top of the meta. And then, more important than that, we have the Isolate Blue Level 4 and Isolate Blue Level 5. You cannot get this anywhere else. So how can you say that this game mode is not important when you get two of the most important resources in the game? And Isolate Blue Level 4 and Level 5, it's not only about unlocking Apocalypse. You also need Isolate Blue Level 4 to get uh, into the Incursion Raids on difficulty 4 and above. And Isolate Blue Level 5, you literally need it on every single character because it gives a boost of 20% more damage on your characters. So these are definitely resources that you want to obtain as well. Speaking of rewards, we have to talk about the season rewards of Alliance Wars, which give you a big, big chunk of uh, T4s. Now, once again, based on the player voice, based on the, the developers, we are also going to get gold, a big injection of gold on these season rewards. I would also like to see these in the raid rewards, but uh, yeah, we cannot ask for much because Alliance Wars is usually one of the game modes where Scopely makes the most money. Okay, so now that we know if Alliance Wars is an important game mode or not, let's talk about uh, the nuances of Alliance Wars and Alliance Wars meta. Now, something that people talk about, uh, oh, what's the best teams on offense? What's the best teams on defense? So on. Yes, that's always extremely important, but something that people don't talk about enough is the position of the characters. The position of the characters in their own team, on defense and on offense is crucial. We're going to talk about a few examples more in the, in, in the near future in the video, but this is so important. Depending on where you have the characters, depending on which room you have these characters, depending on which room you have these teams, is going to completely change how these teams work. They are going to make them super difficult. And some counters that work on specific rooms are not going to work on other rooms. 
and some counters that work with a certain positions are not going to work with other positions so this is extremely important that we talk about it because if you really want to maximize the value of alliance wars and your performance there together with your own alliance it's going to be very important to have these things in in in, in perspective once again where you are using the the teams the position of the characters on those respective teams and also if you have uh, some alternative characters as well we are going to talk about that uh, more in the, the near future okay other thing that uh, we have to talk about alliance wars is that a lot a lot of alliance wars have uh, niche teams we have niche teams for offense we have niche teams for defense should you get up any of these teams like uh, underworld like a force like young avengers like hero as guardians the uh, like uh, heroes for hire the answer is yes but also no 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 don't invest on niche teams unless unless they have value in other game modes as well the niche teams that we have uh, for example underworld to counter dark old that's fine there are other counters against dark old then we have young avengers on defense do you have to get up young avengers maybe maybe yes maybe no it really depends on where you are in the game but once again only invest on these niche teams if you are getting value of them elsewhere so for example let's talk about some of the niche teams heroes for hire should you gear up heroes for hire specifically for alliance wars defense no no you should not you should gear up heroes for hire for the gamma raids the gamma 4.5 where you need to invest steel gear on uh, some characters like heroes for hire like shang chi like iron fist like on wing like misty knight yeah for those specific cases yes then if the team has value in other game modes as well then yes you definitely want to invest on them and especially because if you are going to clear the difficulty 4.5 you need to have those characters at gear tier 16. so the developers they are telling you in which teams you want to invest heroes for hire definitely confirm it yeah we can use these characters because we can use them in other game modes as well let's talk about hydra should you invest hydra should you invest on mercenaries should invest on underworld some of these characters yes you can use on gamma but you can use on the gamma ride but it's just a fraction of the team so instead of getting up full hydra you can get up heroes for hire and maybe zemo maybe red skull you don't have to get up the entire team and this is why some of these nuanced teams this is why some of these niche teams you have to be very very careful with investments you give to them talking about young avengers young avengers a force these characters were required or they were recommended to unlock the horsemen of the apocalypse to complete the sagas but if you guys notice it maybe you guys didn't notice it yet but the sagas are over the scourges are over there will be no more scourges scopely wants you to buy the the legendary so if you are a new player well sucks to be you because you are not going to be able to get these characters easily there will be some offers that will allow you to get some shards for them and maybe maybe every six months we will get one run of the scourge maybe one year we'll get a, a new run of the scourge but because most players already have these characters unlocked there is no benefit or for scopely to run these events again and just give three star three seven star characters for everyone so in terms of young avengers in terms of dark hunters dark hunters as well a force in terms of hero as guardians in terms of all the uh, in terms of ravagers ravagers as well all these super super niche teams that have no value in raids they have no value in cosmic crucible they have no value in dark dimension they have no value in uh, in arena all these niche teams you don't have to invest on them you really don't want to invest on them and better than that you don't want to over invest on them because if you over invest on them all those resources that you apply to the team those teams especially till gear it will all go to waste okay so let's see other points that uh, we we have to talk about uh, yeah this is the most important point this is the most important point that i have to make in this video never ever 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 listen to whales never ever 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 leave, listen to whales this is why we have to talk about these top uh, 10 uh, alliance wars defensive teams from dorky dead because most of those teams or at least some of those teams 
they are only good for whales they are only good if you can over invest on characters if you can over invest on your right teams if you can over invest on your scourge teams if you can over invest on all this junk that at the end of the day for normal players like you and me it doesn't make any fucking sense it doesn't make any fucking sense because the value of this team will completely crash down in terms of the meta and this is another problem with these niche teams is that uh, they are made for a niche the alliance war offensive teams for example once again underworld they were made to counter uh, dark cold and that's fine they counter dark cold okay so what if we start using dark cold on offense oh wait so now they cannot counter the team they were designed to counter and that's the problem like the niche goes away if the meta changes a big problem with these is teams for uh, for defense that we have right now let me think about it for a second i just had it in my mind so we have this with a force young avengers okay so yeah the hard counters yeah okay so in one side one side we have the niche teams on offense underworld dark hunters a force uh, war dogs all of these are niche teams on offense that depending on the meta changes their value strongly diminishes then we have uh, the hard counter teams hard counter teams like heroes for hire hard counter teams like young avengers hard counter teams like uh, hero as guardians so all these teams they have some value at the beginning the same now goes for the infestation team these teams have some value at the beginning but then scopely releases the hard counters because they don't want people to struggle or they want to sell a new team and then the value that you apply to this team it's completely gone because it got hard counter and then it's gone okay, heroes for hire heroes for hire was hard countered by weapon x but weapon x is still holding value while uh, the heroes for hire now they only have value because you are using them on the gamma rates on difficulty 5. so once again this is why you don't want to over invest on niche teams for offense and niche teams for defense that have that have no value elsewhere on alliance wars and you can tell if a if a team is niche or not depending on if they give buffs specifically in alliance wars offense or alliance wars defense this is the case with underworld and young avengers because they have massive increase of health armor and other effects on defense and underworld on offense uh, health focus and uh, trauma and so on in other game modes they don't have any of these so you should definitely not invest on these teams this is extremely extremely important once again do not listen to whales they don't play the same game we play and uh, if you are somewhere in the middle free to play light spender or even a dolphin once again do not listen to whales because they have way more resources than you can have and what applies to them does not apply to you and if you try to chase their meta you are just going to waste your resources and then down the line you are going to struggle a lot more in other game modes or uh, you don't have the resources to invest on teams that, that actually matter for the game okay so with this very very big introduction introduction about alliance wars now we know exactly which teams you should focus on and uh, now we're going to take a look at uh, the top 10 top 5 whatever teams of dorky dad and see if these teams actually make sense for normal people like you and me or if uh, the advices that he is giving you should ignore it and a few changes that we can do to some of these teams to make them better without compromising the the value of the team on his own and without compromising the value of other teams as well so let's get started okay so let's take a look at the first team and on the first team we have uh, heroes for hire with a pre-taunting tank this is something that we have seen it's quite common we can see it uh, with the uh, drax i used it back in the day like two years ago i used this with drax then red guardian then absorbing man some people are using bishop and uh, some people are using captain america those are all valid options and those options were all made to stop uh, dark hunters you know what also stops dark hunters is to change the position of the team there are specific positions that you can use on heroes for hire that still counter the dark hunters if you know how the dark hunters team works 
But once again, Dark Hunters is a niche team that does not matter. You know what teams actually matter? Infinity Watch. If, if you take the advice of Dorky Dead and use Drax, uh, Red Guardian, Absorbing Man, or any other pre taunting tank like Bishop, you are actually making the Heroes for Hire a lot weaker because they are going to lose a lot of their mechanics from Iron Fist, like the insane amount of healing that he has, plus the turn bar and so on. Then on top of that, you are also getting, you are losing the charges. Bro, this team is all about the charges. If you remove Iron Fist, Shang-Chi, Shang-Chi will only get one charge and then you can slap him very, very hard and it's game over extremely quick. So when you apply a pre-taunting tank to Heroes for Hire, you make this super easy to counter with Infinity Watch. Some people say, or Dorky Dad in his video said, oh, uh, if you have 1.5 million Heroes for Hire, your 1 million Infinity Watch is gonna have a hard time to beat it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, But if you are punching across, or if you have a minor punch up, it's not a big problem. I have videos on my channel explaining step by step on how you can always, always counter the Heroes for Hire with Infinity Watch. Even if you have the full team with the three charges, it doesn't matter. But these ones without a full team, with just two charges and one charge on shang -Chi, this is absolutely ridiculous, super, super easy to counter with Infinity Watch. You could also beat it with uh, A-Force Namor, uh, but uh, that's a niche team with another niche character, which I definitely don't, don't recommend. So just inf invest on your Infinity Watch because that team is not going anywhere. It's still one of the best teams that we have uh, in the game. Okay, let's talk about the second team that uh, Dorky Dad he has uh, on this video, which is Young Avengers with Miles. Now, I see this, I understand what's the point of this, but really, Miles, like uh, you have nothing else good. So he takes American Chavez because American Chavez has, has a lot of value in other game modes. The problem is the problem with removing American Chavez is that uh, Young Avengers without American Chavez they are extremely slow. You cannot trigger the 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 special of uh, of Echo early on. You cannot trigger the ultimate of Kate Bishop early on. And without those abilities, this team is a nothing burger. You can take minor, minor, very small A forces and you can destroy this team. And uh, once again, like over investing on these characters and after you remove American Chavez, it doesn't make any fucking sense. You can destroy them with uh, A force, like I mentioned. You can destroy them with the Weapon X and uh, a few other teams like uh, you can beat them with that seed. You can beat them with uh, the latest team. I don't even remember with the uh, what well, I don't remember the, the name of that team, but it's so easy to beat these. Like if you remove American Chavez, the team is just so slow. They are going to get crushed easily. Now you might fool someone like uh, Dorky Dad, maybe, but uh, yeah, like uh, <laughs> Young Avengers without American Chavez is not a big deal. Now you can do some better combos like uh, be beyond that. You can put uh, Quicksilver, Quicksilver with. Uh, uh, Young Avengers on Alliance Wars defense, yeah, that's actually a good team. That's actually pretty tough. You can use uh, Young Avengers with uh, Apocalypse, with Dormammu, with Doctor Doom. Those, and, and Quicksilver, once again, Quicksilver, did I mention Quicksilver? Quicksilver with Young Avengers. Yeah, those teams are way more tough because of the synergies that they have or the fact that uh, you are protecting the characters with the uh, different mechanics. Now, Weapon X can still beat uh, the Dormammu with the uh, Young Avengers, but once again, it comes into play the position of the characters. Depending on where you have Dormammu placed, this might be an easy counter with Weapon X or it might be a 100% nightmare. So very, very important. Once again, niche teams, it's up to you if you want to invest or not. The Young Avengers right now, they don't have any value in other game modes except Alliance Wars. So keep that in mind. Okay, let's talk about the next team. We have uh, Hero as Guardians. Hero as Guardians right now, it's not a big deal. Maybe in the near future with the upcoming characters that are coming to the game, maybe Hero as Guardians on Alliance Wars defense is going to be a little bit more problematic. But right now, it's not a big deal. Now, Porky Pad mentioned in his video that uh, he should use Weapon X against Hero as Guardians. And I'm like, oh my god, what is this? Like, is this real life or is this a fantasy? I, I don't get it. So the way he beats Hero as Guardians is with Weapon X. Well, uh, 
You can also beat Hero as Guardians with any kind of teams. Like, you can beat them with Unlimited. You can even beat them with Dead Seed. It's actually embarrassing. You can definitely beat them with uh, New Warriors. You, you can also beat them with Weapon X, which is 100% uh, waste. You can also beat them with Eternals. I don't know why we're not talking about Eternals. We have a video about uh, Alliance War defensive teams and how to beat them. And you don't have Eternals mentioned anywhere. So this team with Eternals is quite good. Eternals plus the good Ravagers and Minerva. Eternals are going to turn in wind Heroes Guardians. Minerva is going to Elf Steel. And then Yondu Minions are going to turn in wind Heroes Guardians again. And also do the Elf Steel. And uh, that's it. You destroy the Heroes Guardians. You can punch up big with this team. Like uh, 300k, 400k easily. And uh, yeah, even if you have a well-sized Hero as Guardians, it's not a big deal. I mean, there are so many counters for Hero as Guardians, it's actually laughable. Now, something I would like to see, and I expected this from uh, Porky Pad, is some kind of Hero as Guardians with uh, Rebirth, maybe. I don't know. Have you guys heard about this? Captain America together with uh, Thor and Lady Thor. And then we have also the Captain Carter doing some extra damage and healing, clearing some kind of negative effects before, see if he's able to taunt or anything like that. You get exposed to blinds from, uh, from um, Death Seed, for example, but at the same time, you have Captain Carter to clear those blinds from uh, your team. Because once again, your team is slow AF. It's slow AF. So those are alternative options that you can do in order to beat that team. Okay, now we have uh, incur Invasion invasion with Captain Sam. Yeah, I guess. In invasion with Captain Sam. I guess, but once again, New Warriors beats it extremely easy. Then we have uh, Dead Seed also beats them extremely easy. Uh, you have Kestrel. You have Kestrel that also stops the summons and makes this extremely easy to the point where you can beat them with... Uh, uh, what's the name of Secret Avengers? So, I mean, is this really a good team? I don't know, maybe on well territories at 1.8 million or something, this is a good team. But for us, normal people, me and you, this is definitely not a good team. Now, people are going to use this team on defense anyway because it's a raid team and people usually overinvest on raid teams, especially because the content right now is a little bit more difficult. Uh, so yeah, I could definitely see this team on defense, but let's be honest, this is this team is, is not a big deal. You can easily destroy them without uh, any issue. Okay, so let's move on to the next team, which is Young uh, New Warriors plus Emma Frost. New Warriors plus Emma Frost. I find it interesting because one of the best teams to have in Alliance Wars defense is unlimited with uh, Emma Frost. Unlimited with Emma Frost stops counters like uh, the the usual. You cannot do the mirror match with Cable because then you have uh, your team is much slower than the other one, and it will force you to use your Weapon X against Unlimited with Emma Frost, which is actually a big deal. So I don't understand the new Warriors with Emma Frost. You can dead seed it easily. You can uh, use Eternals on this team as well. I don't find it a big deal. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't think so. But yeah, they have big burst damage. They can surprise you. And if you gear them up to insane levels, we are talking about uh, 1.4, 1.5, 1.6. Then with the war buffs, yeah, sure. If you have, for example, the Angar and uh, full buffs and the new warriors on defense yeah absolutely this is going to be a dangerous team because of their burst damage but overall it's not a big deal and once again emma frost she has a lot more value in other game modes and uh, they actually lose removing that pool from here you are removing 20 or 30 percent extra hp that they have so the, ben the benefits that they have from being super tanky, you are actually removing them. So this is a big mistake in my opinion. You should definitely use Emma Frost with Unlimited and uh, use the full New Warriors on uh, Alliance Wars defense. Okay, so now that we talked about the bottom teams that uh, Dorky Dad recommends everyone to use, uh, even that uh, his perspective is from the Well territory, and we already mentioned that you should not listen to whales in terms of alliance wars because they overinvest on teams and the value that those teams have don't really reflect 
for normal people with uh, smaller rosters. Let's talk about these big teams, which are usually combinations of characters and teams to make one single team more powerful. The problem with this type of teams is that uh, sometimes you are, you are wasting multiple teams to make one team stronger, but then they still get one-shotted by this basic ass team. Okay, so we have Tangle Web Hybrid with Dormammu, American Chavez and uh, Kestrel. So the strategy of this team is to make your 2099 go as fast as possible, apply defense down to your enemies and then Kestrel, some some reason with Raider as a weight, uh, she's going to ping your enemies and then you're going to get destroyed. You have Dormammu here to revive your characters and that's pretty much it. The problem is that uh, this team gets slapped very, very easily by Dark Old. Have you heard about Dark Old? Well, Dark Old is one of those teams that you are forced to overinvest because they were very, very strong on Arena. They are still very strong in raids, some of those characters. They are still very strong in Alliance Wars, Cosmic Crucible, Avengers Tower, whenever that comes up. So. Using this team on defense, you are sacrificing Secret Avengers, you are sacrificing Dormammu, you are sacrificing Tangle Web, and you are sacrificing Young Avengers. Four teams, you are sacrificing four teams to make a super team that gets slapped by Dark Old. Now, you might say, oh, but I usually have Dark Old on defense, so this does not apply to me. Well, I'm going to tell you once again what I said at the beginning of the video. Nuance matters, the position of the teams matter, the position of the rooms matter, the position of the characters matter. In if you are organizing your alliance to be the top alliance wars ever, you don't want to use all Dark Holds on defense. You want to use Dark Hold on rooms like Reactor, rooms like Security, rooms like uh, the ones that give the global buffs. But beyond that, you actually don't want to use Dark Old. So if you are on a flight deck, on your flight deck, the top six players that are on the flight deck, all those players should have their Dark Old available to stop these kind of teams. Because let's be honest, the, if the enemy team uses this team everywhere else, then they are really going to sacrifice their offense. Dormammu is very, very strong on multiple teams on offense, the same goes for Tangle Web and also Castle. So you are really sacrificing a lot of offense for this. And once again, at least all the players on the, the flight decks should have their Dark Hold ready to destroy, like literally destroy this team easy mode, really, really easy mode. And especially once again, because you are going to over invest on those characters because they are required to unlock Apocalypse. No, you don't have any other choice. Beyond that, let me take a look at my notes to see if we have anything else here. Yeah, that's pretty much it. You can also beat it with Dead Seed, but I don't recommend it. Dead Seed is actually pretty strong on defense. Once again, depending on which room you are using them. Dead Seed on Reactor is a nightmare. Dead Seed on defense on Reactor is a nightmare. So keep that in mind. And, uh, and that's it. So... Once again, not a big deal, use Dark Hold and you're gonna easily destroy this team. Okay, now we're going to take a look at the next team that is like a top 5 best Alliance Wars defensive team. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, so now in Alliance Wars we have something that is called Exhaust. We have Exhaust debuff. Every time you attack a team and the match closes, that means or you win or you lose, the enemies are going to get exhausted. So you could use five minions to get uh, the Snowair team exhausted and uh, then you could beat it with any other team. And uh, the Snowair team, uh, once again, depending on the, of the position of the characters, depending on what you are doing, this team could be better or not. And uh, also, it also depends on the ISO weight. So the ISO weight is going to be extremely important as well. For example, Fortifier on Korg is like the worst advice ever. Korg has insane amount of damage, especially together with Nova. Nova gives the flex to everyone, and depending on how many deflects you have, that is going to increase the base damage of the characters. So Korg, a character that stacks up a lot of deflects, up to 10, is going to do massive amounts of damage. So you don't want him as a fortifier. Like, fortifier for what? Like, for, just for the extra barrier, when he revives, 
Yeah, bro, that's okay. But if you have Korg as a striker, he's going to completely demolish your team. And then, oh, well, what's the point of survivability if you have no characters to attack, right? He's going to destroy you. And uh, speaking of position, you want to have uh, Cosmo next to Korg because Korg is going to taunt and Cosmo, every time he takes any kind of splash damage, is going to apply bleeds and offense down to the enemies. So that's a way better way of reducing the damage of your enemies than having Fortifier. Fortifier is like 30% extra health, no additional benefits. He does not need the minor uh, defense up. And if you don't have Fortifier level 5 blue, it's completely pointless because you don't have the drain. So what's better is to actually apply Skirmisher Eyes Away to, to Cosmo and then use Cosmo next to Korg. So he's always applying offense down. He's always applying bleeds to your enemies because offense down is going to reduce the damage output of your enemies by 50%, which is definitely a big deal. So yeah, this team can be great on uh, Alliance Wars defense, but... Uh, they are better on offense. First off, they are better on offense. Second, you don't win Alliance Wars by having all your teams on defense. The more teams you clear, the better. Even if you have like, you clear 99% of the rooms, there is one room left. And the other Alliance, they fail more attacks and so on, but they cleared all rooms. So they're gonna have some advantage for sure. Stacking up on your defense, uh, it, it's not good. It's just not good because you need to overinvest to have value on these teams. And overinvest, we already mentioned 100 times on this video, is not a good choice to, to do with your roster. The, the characters are going to get hard counters, and the characters will have uh, nuances and niches that will uh, die down quite fast. So, yeah, fix the position of this team, use them on a different way, or use them on offense, because that's going to be way better for you and for your alliance. The more, to, the more tools you have to beat uh, the enemy's defense, the better it is. And once again, you can use these on defense on specific rooms, like the ones I mentioned before. But the players that are on the flight deck, they should have super massive nowheres to beat any kind of team that uh, your enemies have on their defense. Okay, now you're going to talk about the next Alliance Wars defensive team. Top 5 recommendations from uh, Porcupad. We have Aeold with Apocalypse. And I'm going to be honest, I'm actually very surprised that uh, Porcupad does not recommend uh, Apocalypse to be Raider because he likes to give Raider for everyone. And it would kind of make sense to give Raider to Apocalypse on this specific case. Anyway, so this team is very, very strong. But uh, you can use Apocalypse together with other teams. Something that a lot of people have not seen yet is Apocalypse, especially the big Apocalypse with Heroes for Hire. If you want to talk about cancer teams, if you want to talk about cancer teams, Heroes for Hire with Apocalypse, and especially the big Apocalypse, it's such a cancer. It's such a, a cancer. The damage output of the team is insane. The survivability of the team is insane. And on that specific case, because Apocalypse is giving defense up and even safeguard to <laughs> the heroes for hire, that's actually pretty ridiculous. So, in my opinion, Apocalypse has way more value with other teams, or Apocalypse has way more value on offense. Because uh, we made several counters against Gamma, for example, using Apocalypse and Quicksilver. You can use Apocalypse with uh, Dead Seed as well. That will greatly increase uh, the value of uh, your offense in Alliance Wars. So, while Apocold, yes, it's definitely a strong team. They can be beaten by uh, Unlimited with uh, Dormammu. Of course, you have to make sure that they are on the same size. If they are not on the same size, forget about it. They can punch up like 200k or 300k, but it depends on the size. Then we also have Dark Cold with Dormammu. It's funny, right? Dark Cold with Dormammu actually beats Dark Cold with Apocalypse because this is on defense and you are on offense and you can control which characters you are going to attack. Other teams that can also beat this is War Dogs. So once again, we have War Dogs that are useful in Cosmic Crucible, that were useful for unlocking Archangel, that uh, are still useful on the Gamma Raids, Gamma 4.5, you need Wakanda there, you need War Dogs there. So you have uh, other teams that have a lot more value in other game modes that can counter this one. So once again, we fall into this situation where this is great, but it's one of those niches 
that can be overcome by using those teams that are also useful on other game modes as well. It's definitely a good team. Once again, based on which rooms you are located, based on what is the goal from your alliance, you can use this team on defense, or instead you can use them on offense, especially if you are sitting on the flight decks, because you definitely want to have these characters to counter the other teams we mentioned before. Okay, now we have a porky pad with the gamma on defense. Are people still using gamma on defense? I mean, we have so many counters against the gamma, and especially now with the exhausted mechanic. Does it even make sense to still use gamma on defense? I don't use gamma on defense. But once again, it's up to your alliance. If you are on the flight X, you should definitely no, do not have gamma on defense. And then, depending on the other rooms, where you are, depending on how your rooms are organized, you might also not have Gamma on all the rooms. Now, Gamma is one of those teams that it, the position of the characters really, really matter. The isolate of the characters really, really matter. And uh, this isolate in this position here is quite terrible. There are positions, we talked about this on my live streams, there are positions that where you can use on Gamma that you always, always win. Always. It's it's guaranteed win. Massive punch ups, 500k plus. Gamma versus Gamma. Just because of the position. But Dorky Dad is probably not aware of this. He does not know the the intricacies intricacies of what you can do with the position of the characters. And once again, the eyes await. Ila has a wait. <sighs> I mean, does it even make sense? Let's let's think about it for a second. He's recommending Ila has a wait on uh, Abomination, Braun, She Hulk, and Hulk. When uh, you have to give Eyes Away to Blue level 5 to these characters for the apocalypse. So if you give them Eyes Away Healer, if you give them Eyes Away Healer, then the 20% extra damage you are giving to them, it's going to be denied because you are not taking benefit of the skirmish eyes weight. You are not benefiting of the striker eyes weight. So it's actually quite a big deal to do this. Fortifier, for example, would be a lot better. But we're not going to talk about Fortifier, even that is a decent option for the Gamma team. We're going to talk about the fact that if you use Gamma versus Gamma, if you use Gamma versus Gamma, which sometimes you should, then your Red Hulk is going to apply heal block with trauma to the enemy team. So all these healer eyes await, all this shit that you wasted changing the eyes awaits, wasting eyes to level 4, wasting eyes to level 5 on these characters, it's going to be denied. It's going to be denied by the enemy's Red Hulk. Trauma with heal block, it's game over. Once again, if you have the right position, the game over, it's even faster. It's even faster. Sometimes you can even stop the enemy Red Hulk before he even does his ultimate. So, like, uh, sure, this is a great Alliance Wars defensive team, but because it's one of those teams that we, we have to invest whether we like it or not, because it's an apocalypse requirement, these are the teams that, uh, yeah, you can put them on defense or you can put them on offense. It doesn't matter. It does not compare to the nuances that we have with other teams because this is not a niche team. This is a core team that we have for Marvel Strike Force. And making a mistake like this, changing the eyes weight and so on to get some extra value, like this only works against those trash counters that he uses like um, uh, with, uh, with Spider Weaver or with the SAC team. Like right now we cannot SAC against Gamma. There are teams that you can one shot with. You have Doctor Doom with Kang. You have Apocalypse with Quicksilver, you have Mirror Match Gamma, and there is other team that also counters this that we are not going to talk about. So you have multiple options that counter Gamma. And now you also have Nowhere. Now on top of that you also have Nowhere. So you have up to five teams that can counter Gamma easily. And uh, then once again you should still use Gamma on offense depending on which room you are. So be careful with this. Don't put Ilar as a weight and this expecting like to get some insane war defensive team because it's not going to be the case. And finally, we have the last team from the top 10 Porky Pad Alliance Wars defensive teams and it's no one other than the Black Order. Once again, do not listen to Wales. Do not listen to Wales. The Black Order has a temporary buff that is completely useless in other game modes. Even on Avengers Tower, Black Order is... It has such a minuscule value. 
it's so ridiculous please do not do this do not invest on this team do not invest on this team once again do not listen to whales what works for them does not work for anyone else if you don't have if you don't have like a thousand dollars two thousand dollars to invest on this team you are going to make a, a big problems to your own roster big big mistake then we have also the eyes weight of these characters striker eyes weight on call of z on corvus glaive <laughs> oh my god okay so why you should not have striker eyes weight on corvus glaive and instead you should have raider because first corvus glaive is slow af slow af second he's being controlled by the ai Third, his basic attack, his isolate attack, is very low multiplier, very low multiplier. So you think that you are doing this big damage with Striker isolate? You're actually not. You're actually not because the multiplier of the basic is extremely low. And then, and then you are sacrificing the basic for Thanos to give him Raider? He doesn't have any Raider extra benefits. He doesn't have extra crit chance. He doesn't have extra crit damage. And if you are facing a team with a lot of deflects, the Raider Eyes Away does not even work. So pay attention to that because that's going to be a big deal. That's definitely going to be a big deal. And early on, because Thanos is so fast, having the Raider Eyes Away, it's exactly when all your enemies are full of deflects. It doesn't make sense. The math does not add up. And once again, remember that the characters are being controlled by the AI. The low multipliers on the Eyes Away attacks and the fact that Corvus Glaive actually has a lot of benefits of being a Raider because he has extra kit damage and uh, other effects. So yeah, Black Order, what I'm going to tell you, do not invest on this team. People on Platinum 2 or 3, even Platinum 4, they don't have Black Orders to a size that is scary enough. And even if you face a massive Black Order, there are a lot of teams that can beat them. Dark Old, Infinity Watch, War Dogs. Hey, you guys know that War Dogs? You don't even need War Dogs. It can even be Mbaku with Bashenga. That team is alone is fine to beat these Blair Quarter teams. So please, please do not listen to Wales. Do not invest on these trash teams for Alliance Wars defense because you are really going to compromise what you can do in other game modes like Raids, like Arena, like Cosmic Crucible. Like Dark Dimension, for example, Dark Dimension. Make sure you save your teal gear to get ready for Dark Dimension. And uh, that's it, guys. Those are the top 10, top 5 uh, Alliance Wars defensive teams. Once again, remember, do not listen to Wales. Do not listen to Wales. Yes, Alliance Wars is one of the most important game modes in Marvel Strike Force right now. Do not listen to Wales. Did I say that already? I think I didn't say the time enough. And do not invest on niche teams that do not have any value in other game modes. Once again, Heroes for Hire used to be a niche team, but now you have to invest on them, whether you like it or not, for the Gamma Raids 4.5. The same goes for certain members of Underworld, the same goes for certain members of Hydra, but you really want to pick and choose which characters you are going to invest because investing on Taskmaster is definitely better than investing on Merc LT. So keep that in mind. And that's it, guys. That's my ultimate guide for Alliance Wars defense. Which characters you should use on defense? It's characters that you are forced to use in other places and not just because they are Alliance Wars defense. Because at the end of the day, over investing on those characters are not going to grant any wins because there are always counters against those characters so i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did make sure you smash that like button and if you found the video helpful make sure you share it with your friends on facebook and discord if you're new to my channel make sure you subscribe for more marvel Strike force content and i'll catch you guys later